Good morning, and thank you for joining us. My name is Carrie Smith, and on behalf of Cumulus Networks, I'd like to welcome you to Coffee with Cumulus, a weekly overview of Cumulus Linux. Today we have Quanta joining us as our special guest. Presenting today will be Todd Craw, Customer Solutions Engineer at Cumulus Networks, and Jason Pan, Director of Marketing at Quanta. Todd will run you through an overview of Cumulus Linux and then answer any questions you may have afterwards. Following, Jason will discuss Quanta, Quanta's bare metal switch that supports Cumulus Linux. The Cumulus Linux and Quanta overview will be about 20 minutes. Then we will take the remaining 10 to answer any questions you may have. For those of you interested, you have the opportunity to ask questions using the during the webinar by using the window marked questions. Simply type in your question and click send. And with that, I'd like to turn this over to Todd. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you everybody for joining us today. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to join Coffee with Cumulus and Quanta and find all about uh, what we're doing here at Cumulus and Quanta to advance bare metal networking. So first, um, when we talk about what Cumulus is, is doing, we got to take a step back about 10 or 15 years and look at what happened in the server market. Um, basically, you had a lot of large vertically integrated products, things like uh, Sun Microsystems, SGI, and uh, what they were doing was developing their own custom silicon. In the case of Sun, it was Spark. In the case of SGI, it was MIPS. And they also had their own versions of Unix. They had Solaris and IREX. And they had their own ecosystem. They had applications, CAD CAM, server, um, you know, workstation, all these, all these different applications that you could use on their platforms. Usually they were across all the workstation and server um, environments. But basically it was, it was uh, a black box. They controlled it. If you wanted to get a, a new monitor or a keyboard or a mouse, they had weird connectors and special connectors. You had to go and get it from them, and they were usually very expensive. So they had this really great thing going where they made really great, powerful systems that worked really well. Everything was, was tightly controlled, and, and the world was good. However, um, they were very expensive. And uh, what we saw happen was um, something, something came along that kind of started to chip away at that, and that was Intel, the x86 architecture, particularly the Xeon. You know, as Xeon's got more powerful, faster with multi-core support, you saw that um, these companies like uh, SGI and, and Sun couldn't keep up with them in terms of providing the fastest and most powerful systems. So you saw then a lot of a lot of smaller companies come along like uh, like Supermicro, Dell, um, Quanta, and they basically provided these these uh, server systems with uh, Intel x86, and they were much faster than you could get from SGI or from Sun, and they used uh, you know they were basically like PCs that so you could get whatever keyboard or mouse you wanted, standard, really inexpensive. Uh, the hardware was a lot less expensive. And uh, so, so what Sun did that was um, their way of trying to protect their territory was they tried to move to x86, but they were still very expensive. And uh, SGI um, kind of basically almost went bankrupt and got acquired. And then Sun actually obviously got acquired by, uh, after, after a lot of bad quarters, got acquired by Oracle. So um, what you saw that, that really hastened that demise was the rise of Linux. So Linux you know, came up and became a very mature um, open source software that was being used by all the web scale providers like Google and Yahoo. Um, you know, all the big guys were using it. It, was, it found its way into enterprise. And effectively the combination of x86 Xeon with, with Linux destroyed these large workstation server companies. Um, it was the commoditization curve that hit them hard. And that generally comes through every industry eventually where these large vertically integrated solutions get eventually commoditized. And there's lots of things and tricks you can play to try and lock in your customers and keep that from happening, but it, it eventually fails. So now when we look today at the data center, the modern data center, we're seeing some similar parallels happening, and that's that every major manufacturer today uh, has a Broadcom fixed uh, switch platform or multiple platforms using different Broadcom, uh, Trident, Trident Plus, Trident 2, there's also Intel Fulcrum out there, but that's more in niche markets like high frequency trading, low latency requirements. Um, but you see effectively the Broadcom Trident family everywhere. Cisco Nexus 9K, 3K, Arista, uh, HP, Dell, Juniper, I mean you name it, they, they have these uh, Broadcom based switches. And all of these manufacturers actually, the switches are not built by them, they're built by companies we call ODM. And these companies are located mostly in Asia, and they have presence here in North America as well. 
And today uh, we have Jason with us who's going to talk about that later, about their role and, and how Quanta Cloud Technologies uh, works with us on um, driving this forward. So effectively, you know, you're looking at paying a huge markup for a switch that's usually a reference platform or very close to one. In some cases, the ODMs actually are told by the, by the vendor to build the switch for them, and they actually control all the IP. So you're actually getting exactly what the ODM is building, and the vendor is just marking it up and passing it through to you. So where is the value add in that now? It's really in the operating system and the applications on it. Well, what, what's happened is uh, you don't have a choice of what to put on there. So what Cumulus has done is we've developed an uh, open network install environment, what we call ONI, and we've given that to the OCP, the Open Compute Project, and it's now like a, uh, it's, equivalent, it's equivalent of Pixie Boot on a server. And it effectively allows you to install different OSs onto these bare metal switches. So you can now get a bare metal switch from, from one of these ODMs, preferably someone like Quanta, who is a great partner of ours, and you can install Cumulus Linux on that. So if we take a look at what, what was missing here, we feel it was having an open source Linux-based OS to run on your switches. And the reason being is that you now get access to this whole Linux ecosystem, just like happened on the server side. You have all these great applications and tools that are open source that are value, available for you to just, um, you know, you can install these as packages and use them, or you can actually go and write your own or modify these. It's all open source. The code is available. So we have things like OpenStack, which is an orchestration platform. You have um, different OpenStack distros like MetaCloud or Canonical or Red Hat or Mirantis. You have um, management tools, things like S-Flow and Ganglia, CollectD. You have uh, routing stacks like Quagga is the one we prefer, but there's also one called Bird that you can use. And then you have um, your automation and configuration management tools, which are commonly used for servers, but now can also be used for switches, things like um, Puppet, Chef, CF Engines, Ansible, Salt. And finally, you have these uh, what we call um, network virtualization solutions. These are overlays that sit over a Layer 3 IP fabric and provide Layer 2 connectivity, things like VMware NSX, Nuage, Midakura, Contrail. So all these really cool technologies that are being enabled on open source. And by using a Linux-based operating system on bare metal, you're able to take advantage of that. So if we take a close look at Cumulus Linux itself, what does it look like? Well, it looks a lot like Linux, the reason being it is Linux. So what Cumulus has done is we've taken, a, a, a Deb, we've taken Debian and we've created a fork of that, our own distribution, and it's very tightly focused on networking. So we have features and functionality really focused on what you need in a network environment, especially in the data center. So things like a routing suite with Quagga, IP route, things like bridging with uh, MSTPD and BRCTL, uh, VXLAN support, uh, filtering support with IP tables, EP tables, IP6 tables, uh, management support with SMMPD, LLD, LLDPD. So effectively, you know, we're giving you these kind of tools that are used in the Linux space with hosts, but are also very similar to tools that you have available on most vendor switch, switches that are out there today. They may look a little bit different, but they perform effectively the same. And what Cumulus has done is we've, we've taken um, a lot of these packages and we've modified them. So if you look at the things that are uh, like white with uh, orangish boundary like IP Route 2 or BRCTL, that's something we've lightly modified. Now when we modify this, we take all those changes and we upstream them. We do pull requests. So far none of our pull requests have been denied. And effectively um, that is all open source. So everything we're doing, we're giving back to the community. There's two reasons we do this. One is we want any applications written for Debian, for Linux, to work on our platform. So that's kind of a little bit selfish of us. The other reason is we want to give back to the community. We want to be part of the vibrant and open Linux community, and we want to be contributing to that. And so we've, we've actually contributed some things that we've completely written. One is PTMD, the dark green object in the upper left. PTMD is a cable verification uh, topology checking tool that, that works really good when you're building Layer 3 um, IP fabrics using, using unnumbered interfaces. Because effectively when you do an unnumbered interface with OSPF or BGP, uh, the links will be brought up automatically as long as, the, as long as they're connected. So what PTMD will do is it will verify that those links are actually properly connected to the, to the, to the link and the, and the device that you want to be connected to before bringing it up. So that's something we've contributed. We've also, if you look at the green objects with the orange boundary like Quagga, 
or LLDPD. These are things that we've pretty heavily modified, and we've also upstreamed all those changes. Now, the, the changes take a while to get into the uh, greater community. So a lot of that, all that code is available on our GitHub site, but also the best way to get it is through our distribution and our repo. So if you have Cumulus distribution repo, you get all of this included. Um, the, 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 on the far right, we have these orange objects, SwitchD and SwitchDriver. These are, there's about four packages out of 170 in the Cumulus distribution that are not open source. Um, the reason we can't open source these is these have to do with the merchant silicon, in this case Broadcom, but in the future it could be other merchant silicon. And, and these, these uh, the access to that merchant silicon is restricted. It's their intellectual property using their SDK and their APIs. So we cannot open source that today. The way to think of this is similar to a monolithic driver like a, a binary for, uh, for the NVIDIA drivers on a host today. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, there's an open source driver. It doesn't have great performance, but it'll work. If you want really good performance and really get the most out of the hardware, you use the NVIDIA driver, which is just a, a monolithic binary that you install into your Linux distribution. So it's very similar to that. And what that does, what it allows us to do is take all of these Linux kernel um, tables, like routing tables, ARP table, bridge forwarding database, filter tables, and we can take all those Linux uh, kernel constructs and push them into the silicon. So effectively, what you'll see in Keymus Linux is when you boot into a switch, it looks like a Linux server with many, many ports of wire speed performing interfaces. So like a, a common configuration is a 48 port by 10 gig with 440 gig uplink. And that's what it will look like, and those will all run at, at pretty much line rate, just like they would on anyone else's switch. So that's, that's kind of what our distribution is all about. What we're trying to drive here for you is we want to get you to the software defined data center. We want to allow you to build very high capacity fabrics with unprecedented price performance, make your network faster. We want to make it easier for you to deploy Keymus Linux, simplify the orchestration automation by allowing you to use the existing Linux tool sets that you're using for your servers, things like Puppet, Chef, CF Engine. And we want to make it more affordable. By breaking free from vendor lock-in and breaking this black box model, we're allowing you to lower your CapEx, and then you can also reduce your OpEx by using standard automation tools, the, the tools you're using for your servers. So really, this is, this is where it's going. And uh, one thing we're doing is we're introducing in uh, very shortly this month or early January, uh, Cumulus Linux 2.5, which is really focused on solutions. So it's, it's features, but also it's, it's validated solution guides, and it's, it's um, these designs around VMware vSphere, OpenStack, and Hadoop, which will help you in easily deploying Cumulus Linux around these applications. These are common applications that most people are using in enterprise networks. So we've, we've put a lot of effort into these uh, validated solution guides, into the features required, into testing it to make it better for our customers who are deploying these solutions. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Jason Pan from Quanta. He's one of our key ecosystem partners, and he's going to tell you how Quanta is helping to bring bare metal networking to the masses. Jason? Yeah, hey, Todd, thanks. thank you very much. Um, good, good morning, good, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you are. My name is Jason. I'm the Marketing Director for Quanta. Um, Todd, next slide, please. So a lot of you on the phone might not have heard of Quanta. Quanta is not a small startup. Um, we're actually a you know, $30 billion company based out of Taiwan with presence in U.S., Asia Pacific, as well as EMEA. Um, we're ranked number 409 on the global Fortune 500 roughly about 100,000 employees worldwide. And um, next slide, Todd. Quant had actually sold one out of seven servers in the world, um, and a lot of that goes to our hyperscale customers. You know, customers, there are two customers that we can mention publicly, and that's Facebook and Rackspace. But if you think about all the Internet data centers, you know, the, the largest Internet data centers in the world, probably quanta powers 8 out of 10 of the top data centers in the world. So that's roughly about 1.16 million servers. This, this, this number was actually from 2013. We believe we gained significant market share um, in 2014. So that number should really go up, and we're hoping that we'll, we'll be selling 1 out of 6 servers in 2014. Next slide, please, Todd. So Quanta provides a full suite of products really to, to really supply for, for when you're ready to build your converged infrastructure. We started with doing the servers. 
We moved them into the storage space. We integrated them into a complete rack solution. So instead of buying boxes and assembling them yourself, we rolled them out with the Open Compute Initiative um, based on the you know, open source standards. And now we're getting into the networking area as well. Um, next slide, please, Todd. So this is a quick overview of, of all the different various components that Quanta could supply to your data center solution. Um, on the left-hand side, we have all the compute nodes. And, and the ones that I'm showing here in this particular slide is um, more from the open compute product line. We also have our complete 19-inch standard rack-mounted servers, whether that's 1U, 2U, 3U, multi-node servers, uh, micro servers. Um, on this slide here, what we're showing is the open compute, which is based on the 21-inch form factor. On the left side, you'll see the two compute nodes. Um, the one that is um, inspired by Facebook is what we call the triplet, which is at the top there. That's called the FC03, uh, F03C. Uh, F F F03C. And then in the middle there is our 2U4 node, and then at the bottom is our microserver which supports many microservers based on the um, Atom Avatum processor. In the middle is what we have when we integrate all these different components into a OCP rack, and we call this the Rack OX. And then on the right-hand side, what we're showing is um, there's a switch at the top. We also have the components, the motherboard, the Winterfell motherboards, which is OCP um, certified, and then we also have storage units. Um, Todd, next slide, please. What I'd like to do is um, spend a little bit of time on all the switches that we're selling that are ONIE certified and ONIE based. Um, at the very top there, this is the 1 gig base solution. Um, the T1048-LB9, or LB9 for short, is our 48 core 1 gig E with 4 SFP plus um, you know, uh, 10 gig E uplinks. And then moving down, to the 10 gig -E switches, what we have um, starting with the Trident Plus based um, um, chipset um, is the LY2. Both the LY2 and LY2R are actually very similar. The main difference is the LY2R is fireless and gives you better power efficiency and also costs a little bit, you know, um, gives you a better value in terms of costing as well. Both of these switches support 48 ports of the 10 gig -E SFP Plus and it has four uplinks, um, you know, 40 gig QSFP uplinks. And then on the Trident 2 front, what we have is the LY8. This is very similar to the LY2R, but it's based on the Trident 2 um, um, chipset. This supports 48 ports of the 10 gig E SFP plus, as well as um, six additional 40 gig uplinks. And then coming very soon, we've been asked by a lot of customers to have a 10-base um, ten T solution, well, 10G-base T solution. And my understanding is um, currently we're working with Cumulus um, very closely, and we should be able to ship this in Q1 of 2015. And this will provide 48 ports of 10 gig E um, as a 10G-base T solution, and then six 40 gig QSFP uplinks. And then finally, looking at the 40 gig switches, based on the Trident 2 Plus, we do have the LY2, um, 32 gigs of the 40 gig ports, QSFP Plus, and then 32 ports of the QSFP based on the Intel processor. So this will be based on the x86 processor. And that particular model, the LY6-X86, will also be available sometime during the Q1 timeframe in 2015. So as you can see, there's a lot of um, Cumulus um, ONIE supported um, bare metal switches from Quanta. Um, what I'll do is instead of taking up the time to go through, um, next slide please Todd, instead of going through all the individual switches, um, what I've shown here is just one example of our um, switch that supports ONIE. In this particular example, it's the LY6 hardware which supports 32 ports of the 40 gig QSFP. And um, basically, if you wanted to, you could actually attach a fan out cable that splits each one of these 40 gig SFP plus ports 
into four 10 gig you know, uh, SFP plus ports. And then from the picture, what you see is you know, there's a total of 32 ports in the front, and then there's the uplinks. There's the total of the six port uplinks um, in the back. We, got, we do have redundant power supply. Um, roughly, the power consumption here is about 227 watts, which is um, very power efficient. And this is based on the 2020 CPU. I believe on the x86 um, processors, we might gain you know, additional uh, efficiency as well. Okay? So next slide, Todd. So with that, um, what I'd like to do is turn it back to um, Carrie. Great. Thanks, um, Jason. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, everyone. We have a lot of great questions coming in. Um, the first one, Todd, I believe is for you. What type of architectures is Cumulus Linux best suited for? And, yeah. Um, the best architectures are usually what we're seeing is people, um, you know, people doing web scale stuff or Hadoop where they really want like a layer three fabric. It's really good for network virtualization where you're doing like an overlay. And you just basically need a low cost IP layer three fabric. It also fits into some layer two environments, but obviously those don't scale as well. Great, thanks. Um, the next question is, uh, do I need Oni to run Cumulus Linux, or can I just load it onto any switch that I own? So you do have to have Oni. Um, that's the way that we, we get the this, this software, uh, Cumulus Linux, or anyone else's uh, distribution loaded onto your switch. Um, they, they have a special SKU. So, so it has to also be on our hardware compatibility list, which will show like a Quanta with Oni or an Acton with Oni or whatever switch you select. Great. Um, let's see. And then I've got a question coming in from Jeff Carroll. What is the lowest cost software for basic lab testing? I'm not sure who should answer that. I, I, I can take that. I guess I would say we have one gig licenses, which are less expensive, and the one gig switches are less expensive. But you could you could probably now with the pricing today, you could probably get a, a 48 by 10 gig with 40 gig uplink Trident switch, just a regular Trident or Trident Plus. Those are fairly inexpensive now with the Trident twos, and the licenses for those aren't too expensive as well. Okay, sorry. Um, we're gonna. I'm gonna take a step back and say, what is the lowest cost switch for for testing? <laughs> so on the on the bare metal switch side, um, rough, you know, our one gig switch starts about street price is about twelve hundred to thirteen hundred dollars. Perfect. Thanks. And are there any plans for switches with larger buffers? Yeah, so I was going to have that in the text window, but basically the buffer size is dependent upon the, upon the network silicon that's used. In this case, it's, it's Broadcom. Um, Intel also has, has very small buffers. Um, generally, large buffers you only see on custom silicon from some of the vendors. And, uh, I mean, honestly, you don't really want to buffer a lot because you're just delaying your traffic. It, it would work well maybe with video, but with a lot of traffic that's latency or jitter sensitive, big buffers are a bad thing. But obviously, maybe uh, you have an application there, uh, Matt, that you're asking about. So that's something we could take offline and answer for you if you're interested. Um, Jason, this question is for you. What is the support model if users buy a Quanta BMS with Cumulus? Uh, the support model, of course, Quanta is the first line of defense. So we'll take all the layer one support. Um, our support technicians will diagnostic and work with the customer to ensure it's not a hardware issue. If it's a hardware issue, we'll go ahead and resolve that. But if it turns out it's a software-related re issue, we'll, we'll work with Cumulus to get that resolved. Great, thanks. Um, and final question, looks like the, la the final question coming in. Um, can I buy direct or do I need to work with a channel partner to buy Cumulus Linux? Um, so I, I guess I can take that. You, we have a bunch of partners, companies like Quanta as well as uh, VARS, and you can go to any of these companies and you can purchase hardware and uh, Cumulus Linux through them. Great, thanks. And, and, um, sorry, go ahead. Okay, I was going to say that if you go to the Quanta website under how to buy, there's a list of resellers that sells both Quanta and the Cumulus software. Oh, great. And do you have a URL for that? Or is it impossible to find on your yeah. website? It's quantaqct.com, and then you click on you know, where to buy. Great. 
Thanks. <clears throat> Um, thank you, Todd. Thank you, Jason. We're out of time now. Thank you, everyone, for your participation. We hope you found this overview of Cumulus Linux useful and Qantas, Quanta as well. Um, we'd love to have you tune into our next webinar, Open Contrail and Cumulus Linux, on December 10th. Details are available on our website at cumulusnetworks.com webinars. Thank you, everyone, for your time today.